Welcome back to New York City, everyone. My name is Todd Brandon Morris, and I'm the founder of Outfit. And on today's episode of Inside of the Warehouse, we're going to be comparing two different shirts: the Bella Canvas 3001 against the Bella and Canvas 3413. All right, let's hop right in. If this is your first time to an Inside the Warehouse video, first let me introduce myself. Again, my name is Todd. I started Outfit back in 2014. In 2017 is when I launched the apparel line. It started with one t-shirt. I had about 80 of them, paid about a thousand bucks. The box was under my bed, had them in my backpack, had them at work, sold them through Instagram, just whoever I have, however is how I started it. Um, and fast forward many years later, here we are. When I launched the apparel line, it was super important to me that we picked the proper blank t-shirt from the start. So this took almost three months. Um, I started with a whole bunch of them, then I whittled it down to five shirts, and then I whittled that down to two shirts. And then me and some coaches and some other athletes, we wore, washed, wore, washed those shirts for about a month um, before we finally picked one. It was super important to me that it looked good out of the packaging, but it also looked good months later, years later. I literally wanted this to be everyone's. That first shirt was supposed to be your favorite shirt. The first one you grab out of the wash, the first one that you want to wear when, when you're going out. And we ended up with uh, a Next Level shirt, actually. It's a great shirt. I made a separate video about um, how we ended up there and why we switched. The reason that we, we switched, though, is you don't know what you don't know, right? And so when you're starting something, there were variables and factors that I didn't even know to be thinking about when picking a shirt. And again, I talk about all that in that separate video about why we switched from one to the other. But we did switch over to this Bella and Canvas 3413, and this continues to be the shirt that we use and print almost all of our shirts on. Um, we're going to be comparing that shirt today against the 3001. We're going to look at the different metrics, kind of just like look at the numbers, compare them side by side. And then after that, I'll kind of give you my overall thoughts and feelings and what I would be thinking about. And then we'll get you out of here and hopefully see you in another Inside the Warehouse video soon. So with that being said, if you haven't already uh, liked this video, please do so. I promise that it's going to have some good content. And then subscribe to the channel because we're always trying to get new content up on a regular basis. Uh, with that being said, let's take a look at the numbers. All right, first thing, both of these shirts are unisex size. What's that mean? It means there's not a women's cut and a men's cut, but there's one cut meant for everyone to wear. Uh, this is super helpful when you're starting your apparel company and your apparel brand because this isn't one shirt that I have. If I sell this shirt, I'm not selling one shirt or you at least don't want to think about it that way. I'm selling five shirts. Um, we screen print. We screen print all of our shirts. We don't do any DTG. Uh, I did print these with DTG, which we'll talk about later um, for the sake of this video, but everything is screen printed. So that means I have to hold the inventory on everything. So if I sell out of medium of this, but I still have extra small, small, large and extra large, I have to print a pretty big run, you know, maybe 50, 100 shirts of mediums just to fill in that size if I'm not properly managing the different sizes and how they're going to kind of sell through. So the uh, unisex fit is helpful because you only have to do that with maybe five different sizes instead of doubling that for a men's and women's and having to do that with like 10 sizes or so. So both of these are considered unisex. I will say in my experience the two main differences from a men's shirt and a unisex shirt is one the length. So unisex shirts are a little bit shorter in my experience, then uh, the men's, and then the other one is this chest area. There's just a little more material, a little more fabric there. Um, I work out a little bit, I don't mind it, but some other people might. Uh, so those are the two things that I would take into consideration um, if you're trying to decide between a unisex and carrying a men's and women's cut. Next up, both of these shirts are side seamed, all right? So if they're sewn, there's a seam that runs down the side which lets them um, make them fit, be more fitted to it, fit the, the contours and the curves of the body instead of just having this straight line of material go from your armpit straight down, um, way less flattering. So both of these are side seamed. Next up is tearaway labels. Both of these have tearaway labels. So these labels here are super easy just to rip off. Uh, why, why do you care? Why does that matter? One is most customers expect it. I definitely expect it on all my apparel these days. Um, either if it's just rubbing against my neck or sometimes you get that one that sticks out and you can't get it back in no matter what. So it's easy to, just to rip it off. Two though is you can customize or you can increase the branding on your shirt more with an inside label. So if you were to tear off that label uh, at your printing facility or have them do it and then you could print on there, medium shirt, uh, 
the company name, washing instructions, you can do all that. It's a nice way to continue to kind of like build on your brand. We don't do that, we don't do that for two reasons. Um, the first one is, it's expensive to do that. Uh, so this shirt, almost all of our shirts have two print areas. Some just one, but two. So what I mean by that is, this is a print area here on the front, and then this is a print area here on the sleeve. All right, so as you add print areas, particularly with, uh, with both of them, DTG or screen printing. As you add print areas, you're adding costs. And so it's not super important to me to have, you know, me screen print medium on that shirt when that tag is there. The other reason that I also don't mind leaving the Bell and Canvas is Bell and Canvas is known to have a good brand, people like it. Um, and so I like people when they get the shirts to see, they can see our branding, but they also go, oh wow, this is a Bell and Canvas shirt. Um, just they immediately know that they're getting this higher quality shirt. So um, that's why I don't mind leaving them on, but your customer is gonna expect it. So it's something that you wanna um, be looking out for. All right, next up is material. And that's probably gonna be the biggest thing about these two shirts is the differences. This one right here, the 3413, again, this is the shirt that we use um, for all of our apparel or the majority, is a tri-blend. So it's a mixture of cotton, polyester, and rayon. This one is gonna be almost 100% cotton. So it's 90% cotton, 10% polyester. So this just has two materials, the majority of it being cotton, and this one has three. All right, so let's, like, what's the difference? Let's just start here. There's 10% polyester, let's pretend like there's none for the sake of this conversation. Um, it does help, the polyester does help make it feel a little softer and it does help with wicking a little bit. But if this is roughly 100% uh, of a cotton shirt, then you are gonna experience significant shrinkage in this shirt than you are compared to this, which only has 25% cotton. So only one quarter of this shirt's material can shrink and they're both supposed to be pretty shrunk with materials. Um, but even if they're not this uh, 3413, this tri-blend, you're gonna have much less shrinkage issues. And with that being said, in, since 2017, I think I've gotten two complaints about someone saying that their shirt shrunk too much or shrunk at, at all. So it definitely is not an issue that I've ever encountered. Here you are gonna encounter. So they both have cotton shirts and this is mostly cotton. I will say the cotton is a really nice cotton. It's a ring spun and comb cotton. So what does that mean? Um, the ring spun is just gonna make it tighter. Uh, and then the combing is actually combing out debris and, and, and other types of material that might be in there, particularly from the cotton being in the field. So um, when you do both of those, you get a really nice cotton. They both feel very nice. They both are soft. Um, the tri-blend is noticeably softer. When you pick this up, you're gonna feel it's gonna be softer, but this is still a nice soft material. Also though, um, besides just like the softness, this shirt, this cotton shirt, is also a little bit heavier. So this is, finished shirt is a 4.2 ounce shirt, and then this is gonna be a 3.8 ounce shirt. Um, things that you might not know or ever care or ever, ever see, but the takeaway is just that this is going to be a little bit heavier and it's going to be just because of that cotton material. There is one more reason though why the material is going to be important and that's going to be how you print your shirts. So both of these currently were screen, they're not, both of these currently were DTG, direct to garment printed. So it was, if you don't know what that is, you take the t-shirt, you put it on a board or whatnot, and then you're going to run it through a printer just like you would a piece of paper. And so that's how these were, were printed. None of our shirts are DTG. It is a, a process that I, I, have, I just don't like. I've gone on many times about it. I've not had a good experience. The very large DTG provider here in the States, um, I still use them. I, you know, I use these to mock up these shirts. I am not exaggerating. One third of every order, one out of every three orders has something wrong with it. And that's me shipping all the orders to myself. Um, like I'm not shifting them out to customers, but I, it's been constant over the years. Like I would never shift just because I know like one out of three orders is gonna have an issue. And maybe the customer, the end customer is not gonna know it or see it or care, but I do and I'm paying for that shirt and I'm tired of just shirt after shirt being wrong. Even these two shirts, right? I got printed through them. I put the logo exactly center, exactly center. So if I take a look at this label here, the middle of it, that's the center of the shirt and I go down and it should be coming down about in that hyphen, which it roughly does. You take a look at this shirt here and I'm gonna come down right in the middle of that tag 
and where does it bring me, right? It brings me in the middle of the T in the hyphen. So this is all shifted um, to the right. Super frustrating. Um, and that happens all the time, which I can't control because the DTG then sends it out to the customer and so I don't ever see it. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up though is that this cotton material is gonna hold, uh, I don't know a lot about DTG, but you know I do believe that they were created for cotton shirts. And so that's why a lot of the issues with the tri-blend shirts, different materials hold on or the ink holds on to different materials in different ways. But when it comes to this, the DTG printing process is gonna hold that ink a lot better than this tri-blend is. I've never worn this shirt outside of 30 seconds to just to try it on real quick. And um, it's already cracking, it's already peeling. This would be really frustrating to me as a customer to buy this and already have this cracking, peeling shirt before I ever wore it. And so the DTG printer doesn't have the negative repercussions of sending out poor quality shirt. Your brand does. And their customer service, I will say their customer service is good. Like every time I complain, which was often, they are really nice about it, even though I have to send photos and photos and emails, but like they are nice about it though. It's their only like redeeming factor. Let's talk about color options. This tri blend, this 3413, is gonna come in about 53 colors. This 3001 comes in 69 colors. Let's just be clear, those are both a lot of options. Those are both more options than you'll probably ever need. So I wouldn't think too much about colors. Um, why do you care about colors? Well, I'll tell you, you're gonna wanna care because in the future you're gonna wanna be using different colors. And say you just wanna make a color shirt that your current t-shirt um, blank doesn't come in, then you're either gonna have to abandon that or you're gonna have to go find a new shirt that comes in that color and then deal with everything about printing on a new shirt. It could just as much be uh, a loyal customer knowing that that shirt doesn't fit the same, which is why I think it's super important that you stay with one shirt. Um, when we did switch from this 3413, I got probably like five or 10 emails from customers that I know saying, oh, this is a new shirt. And they liked it, but they definitely let me know pretty quickly that they could tell it was a different shirt. So um, the reason, again, that I'm saying that is if one shirt is this brand, another shirt is this brand, and another shirt is this brand, your customer never gets that consistency to know what they're gonna get the next time they order, which makes them less likely to place an order than if they always know, I love how the shirt feels, I love how every one of those shirts feels because they're all in the same, then they're gonna be more likely to place orders in the future. Next up, let's talk cost. 384 is how much this shirt is. And then this one is 560. For sure. There's a dollar seventy-five difference from, from my wholesaler between these two shirts. Let's round up and say almost two dollars. That's a big difference. When I was looking at shirts originally, I never factored in costs. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even realize it would be much of a factor. Um, that was kind of naive on my part. But I kind of just didn't care because I just knew if I found the right shirt and if I got the right branding and the right images, that the cost wasn't going to be as, as important. Okay, so those are some of the numbers or some of the metrics. I'm gonna talk about size and kind of just how it lays on your body. First off, I am gonna say, with this 3001, you are gonna have more shrinkage so that that fit is gonna be different than how it comes out of the packaging. But if we just compare the two on how they come out of the packaging, I'm gonna say, this 3413 is a little more fitted in the side. This is gonna be a little straighter, a little fuller, and this one's gonna be a little more fitted. It's gonna come in a little more in the armpit and stay closer to the side as you're coming down. Um, I wear medium in all shirts, I wear a medium in this shirt. I, I will say though, um, as our brand grows and as more people who aren't exactly in our target demographic, so they aren't LGBTQI people that are um, like really into fitness, but maybe more just into the casual part of like our athleisure brand, the more the, the um, brand has grown outside of us just directly impacting the brand through our fitness, the more feedback I get that people think that this runs small. Um, I don't think it runs small, but as people, um, again, leave reviews and, and whatnot, uh, it's always the same. If, if they're saying, they're like, oh my God, I love the shirt, I love this, I love that, runs a little small, take that in, into consideration. So they're not really like um, thinking the shirt, they're just kind of giving people a heads up. I, again, I don't know if I agree that it runs small. I, it is tight and it is fitted, and if you don't like your clothes that way, then you might want a size up so that then it's looser. Um, but that's just something, you know, I'll throw it out there because we've, I've been getting more feedback about it. Uh, the other thing is that this one just kind of like lays on your body a little bit better. And then this one, particularly in the armpit, it's a little more snug and it just kind of feels a little more stiff. 
uh, it doesn't kind of just roll or kind of flow with the body as much as this 3413 does. But they both fit nice, they're both nice shirts. I don't know that, that you can go wrong in that fit area. And then just building on that fit a little bit, if you take a look at the two shirts, in this position, if you look, from my perspective at least, this 3413 looks smaller than this. These are both medium shirts, unwashed, never worn, um, except for like a minute or so. So this is exactly how it's gonna look coming out of the, the packaging. This one looks like it's, it's a little bit smaller than this one. I'll put a side-by-side -side shot up. Um, and you'll see that this 3413 is on the side, side by side shot. Sorry, it's not one's on top of the other. This 343 is the one that's on top, and then this 3001 is the one that's on the bottom. And you're gonna see there's not a lot of room. There is a little bit extra at the bottom. So this one is just a little bit shorter in general. And then you'll also see on how it's hanging, um, the difference between the front and the back is gonna be a little more noticeable. Um, yeah, these are both sitting the same, so it's gonna be a little more noticeable where that back is a little bit longer than the front than it is here in that 3001. All right, so we're almost near the end. Either you've decided on which shirt you want or you're still not sure, so let's see if I can give you my last three thoughts, all right? If I was still deciding at this point, I'd be thinking about three different factors. First one would just be cost. We know this shirt is, is 3001, is about $1.75 cheaper than this 3413. So if you're brand new and you're starting up and uh, nothing else has swayed you to this point, then you might want to think about going with the cheaper shirt because it's still a great shirt. It is, it is almost 100% cotton, it's 90% cotton, um, but still a great shirt. Next one is your printing method. Are you going to be doing direct to garment, DTG printing, or are you going to be screen printing? I know a lot of people are going to be doing DTG printing. And so if you are gonna do that, I would also stick with this 3001. Um, DTG, I believe, or at least in my experience, is much better on printing on cotton than it is on this tri-blend material. Different materials are gonna hold that ink differently. And so I, I guess it's a lot better, but um, you know, all this cracking and peeling that I already have on this brand new tri-blend shirt, uh, once again, reinforces in my mind that for my brand, DTG is not the way to go. Screen printing is. Um, but if you're going with that, 3001. If you're gonna screen print though, definitely think more about this 3413 again. And then lastly, it's just gonna be like, what kind of fit do you want? And if you kind of just roll with that, what kind of fit does your projected customer want? So it's gonna be a little, this is this 3413 is gonna be a little more fitted, a little tighter in the arms, a little tighter in the armpit here. And the material is also just a little bit thinner um, on the body. This one, it's gonna be a little more fuller through the side. Arm is just a little more fuller. It, it actually, like, when, when you lay them side by side, it doesn't look that way, but I think it's just because the material is stiffer that it has that fuller feel. Um, so a little straight, a little fuller, a little less fitted. All in all, I'll tell you right now, all in all between these two, if I don't know much about you, I'm gonna say choose this one, this 3001, because when it comes to cost, when it comes to your ability to print on it with DTG, and when it comes to the overall fit against the kind of like expectations of the population or society in general, I think that this is a pretty good fit. If we weren't locked in with this 3413 and we didn't have an entire warehouse filled with this shirt, I might think about changing, but not today. All right, well, hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel, please. Do us a big favor. Uh, the next one that we're gonna be doing is gonna be fun. It's gonna be this 3001, which remember right now, this is 10% um, polyester, 90% cotton, but there's also a 3001 CVC, which is 48% cotton and 52% polyester. So it's more of like a 50-50 blend, more of what I would like getting closer to this 3413. So we're gonna compare these two and then just see between those which one you should go with or at least which one I think you should go with. Hey, you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. I did wanna say one more thing before I go. I was talking before about how, how I have feelings about DTG or direct-to-garment printing versus screen printing. And I think one of the reasons maybe I feel so passionately is that I've always had a really good experience with our screen print vendor. So from the beginning, we've only used one place for all, all of our shirts and all of our apparel. Their name is Forever Fierce. You can go down in the description to go to their website. Um, but I've never had anything but a, a great experience there. Um, graphic design, so the designs that, that you can put on the shirts, they're gonna do for you for free as long as you print with them. Um, they have really high customer service. Matt's great over there. Uh, really nothing to come complain about. So if you're looking for a shirt printer, a screen printing house, um, and you're here somewhere in the US, you should definitely check them out. Again, their info is gonna be down in the description. I'm gonna get out of here though. I'll see you next time in the warehouse.